Welcome to Apologia and another edition of Ham and Egg News, where we react to Ken Ham reacting to things. So we just went through July 7th. Oh, that was yesterday. That was yesterday. Today's the 8th. <laughs> Do you realize three years ago, July 7th, we opened the ark to the public? Mm -hmm. And three years ago, July 5th, was our ribbon cutting day. Thought I'd show you. Oh, no, Mr. Ham. You seem to be completely ignoring what happened on July 6th. Oh, that's right. The fourth annual ark encounter protest was this weekend. And people often ask why we're back here protesting the ark encounter every single year. Well, I'm protesting to ensure that science and reason are still being taught in our schools. Creation is so teaching children that the world is 6,000 years old and that the evolution is just a theory. You didn't bring anyone along to talk about it? I told Eric Murphy to be here. Eric, great. Where is he? Wait for it. This boat won't float. This boat won't float. This... I don't see an arc. Where is everyone? You're in the wrong place, dumbass. Oh, hell. <laughs> that was cruel, Aaron. Don't worry, Eric. Aaron fell for the same thing last year. It's true. Playground that was just opened. And so it has, it has officially evolved. Wow. <laughs> I'm not allowed to say that. You just said it evolved. And according to Kent Hovind, any use of the word evolution makes something part of the theory of evolution. So this is the seventh type of evolution. It's like amusement park evolution. <laughs> it must be. I just like how he had to digitally render happy people into his park. <laughs> uh, because the atheist said no one would come and no one was coming. And the Freedom from Religion Foundation said it would fail. Mm -hmm. And secondly, newspapers did all they could to try to make it fail. And mm -hmm. all that's happened is millions have come and mm -hmm. the numbers keep increasing and we had record attendance. All that's happened was that they had to build on all this other crap that they just showed you because people weren't coming for the $100 million boat. They'd come for the $10,000 playground, but not for the $100 million boat. It's not a boat, Aaron. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. The facade, the sham that has the two buildings behind it. <laughs> you know how the original arc was only supposed to have one window? Right. Just one? Yeah. Well, this one has a high induction air conditioning system that, that still isn't adequate just for the sparse number of people and stuffed animals that are in there not breathing. So imagine what the arc would have actually been like if there was an actual Noah and an actual arc. All those people would have died of methane poisoning in moments. But of course, <laughs> Grandma and Grandpa Cletus don't get that when they come from their trailer park to go visit this place. You need a Noah's Ark. They only needed it really for about a year. Exactly. So ours has outlasted the actual Ark. There was no actual Ark, you moron. <laughs> and this isn't even a boat. I mean, Neither was they're wrong the, on both the ark sides. Of the storybook. An Ark is a box. Okay, it, so it wouldn't. You notice that, that that Ken Ham's sham of a facade of a thing that never existed. It has a keel and a stern and a, and a hull. That no, it was a box. Now, in the original version, it was basically a basket. So the original boat would have been round, actually, having none of that. And it was supposed to be punted down the river. And for those who don't know, this story comes from an actual flood that really happened at around 2900 BC in the city of Shurapak, which is Iraq. Okay, so you had this King Zeusudra. He's got his animals aboard this big reed boat. And, you know, like mostly goats, small cattle and stuff. And he's taking them to market. And he and his people are punting down the Tigris or Euphrates, which one of those... And they're, they're punting down this river, and then there's this huge flood. So the whole place flash floods, and, and archaeologists have confirmed this actually did happen. It basically ended the Jemdat period and began the Nasser. And so the whole area was completely devastated. The water actually was, just like the Bible says, it went up to 15 cubits, which equates to 22 feet, which is what the Bible is talking about. That's the depth of the flood that they actually confirmed really happened in the city of Shurapak. So here's this guy floating his seven clean animals and all that to town, but then the, the place flash floods and he goes off into the Persian Gulf in a box, literally an ark that has no means of, of steering or of propulsion. He's punting down a river and now he's in water that is too deep to punt. So he's stuck floating in the Persian Gulf until he eventually comes to rest on the land, and which time he, of course, performs a sacrifice to one of his animals to appease one of the Mesopotamian gods that were originally blamed for this event. So that's where all that came from. And that's why none of the flood legends from around the world match this story. Everybody that has floods has flood legends. And there's only one way to exaggerate that. Well, what if we stole the story where the flood flooded the whole world? So everybody's got a legend like that, except the Japanese, because they have so many tsunamis that they don't think that's funny. So they never made a legend like that. That's just something you don't talk about, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, did I rant? 
Not that. Okay, so uh, Avery, uh, you're at Token Millennial, but you're also Canadian. Hmm. Huh. Looks like they're not going to talk about you guys. I was there walking alongside Ken Ham on the first time when they first opened it, and he did talk about me then. He made an announcement to his people that, that I found out about through Australian news of all places, where he was telling his congregation to pray for me. The fun thing was is that I was walking beside him, recording him while he is walking next to Bill Nye. And while he's walking with Bill Nye, of course, there's all these movie cameras because they're making their movie, you know, that's this big time moment. And you can see the moment when he realizes that I'm right next to him, that I'm walking along right next to him two feet away. Because he turns and he makes this shocked gasp. <laughs> I, I, I was very happy with that's that. That's awesome. Eric, this was your first ARC protest? Yes, it was. Tell us about it. If you go next year, bring shorts because it was way too hot for pants. I saw Aaron wearing combat boots and dude, how did you not melt? <laughs> I had a hat. You... I felt it. Okay. No, yeah, no, totally. I, uh... <laughs> I'd have lost 20 pounds in what Aaron was wearing. He was a trooper through it. Uh, met tons and tons of really, really nice people. The entire event was super well supported. It was really funny. Cars would drive by and at least a third were, you know, turning up Christian music and loudly singing at us, which was weird. In all, it was just fun. Are you been there a few times? This is this was your third one, I think? I think this was the third one that I did, yeah. And what we want to do next time is to invite some actual representatives from, you know, AIG's group to have them out there and table with us. Seriously, have them out there to table with us. Conversation is what they don't want to have. And that's what we're really interested in. There are people that hold the beliefs that they do because they've only ever heard lies all their life. It's like the mushroom thing. You know, I'm a mushroom. They keep me in the dark and they feed me bullshit. <laughs> that's you know where a lot of these people come from. And then, then it becomes a question of honesty. Does the truth matter to you? But faith is all about pretending to know things you don't know and convincing yourself of things that are not evidently true. See, I'm sitting on the other side of it. I mean, I, I absolutely love that you're having these conversations, but even if not a single one was had, the fact that this protest is happening creates attention, and that attention needs to be turned into shame. I mean, I'm sorry, I know it sounds bad, but yeah, we should be ashamed as a society that this kind of shit is happening. And so when we get together like that, when we draw attention to it, it's not just the minds of those people that we're changing, but it's empowering and emboldening people to take action and prevent this kind of crap from happening. Looks like there's another great lineup of speakers this year. You two among them. Ask questions. Consider the sources that helped you formulate your beliefs. Seek and analyze new data from sources outside of your circle. And change your beliefs in light of new conclusions. You are welcome to believe any fairy tale you want. You are not welcome to mislead and deceive other people's children with bullshit. So when the Ark Encounter receives up to $10 million from the state of Kentucky for their religious propaganda while remaining discriminatory in hire practices, I will protest. And try to take the high road and not resort to insults and derogation. And then I thought, <laughs> fuck that. Yeah. Perhaps Ken Ham was sitting around Williamstown, Kentucky one time looking around and thought to himself, well, gee hell, where will the children of Kentucky go to learn about Jesus? What were your messages this year? Well, as always, I was uh, outraged at lying and mis deliberately misleading and deceiving sequestered children in the classroom, which is what the homeschool is all about. Their attempts to take over public schools is about this is what Christian schools are about. They want to control what the kids believe. They don't want people who can think and figure out a better world than the one they're trying to foist upon us. My speech um, had... A good bit of crossover there. I know that I talked about education. I spoke about how any money that's going into this isn't going into things that that state desperately needs. There is a drug epidemic there. There are systemic issues with poverty and education. In one of the drugs. most religious states in the country? How could that be? Yeah, right? <laughs> and we should be doing something about it. Couldn't $100 million have done some actual good? And instead they spent it on Jeebus. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's ridiculous. We need to foster a sense of wonder in the next generation because we came up on the 50-year anniversary of the moon landing. We're coming up on it. 50 years. What have we done? You know, it's not just about the God question. It's teaching science and math 
it's instilling this push to reach for the stars, and we haven't done it in two generations. Yeah, what you just said about science and math, now that, that may bounce off the head of many believers, is that, okay, well, that's just hard work, that's really Einstein-y, a lot of thinky stuff, and that doesn't appeal to me. I want to believe in magical emotional stuff. You know, I want to circumvent the intellect to speak to the emotion. When you learn how to speak to a person's conscience and circumnavigate the intellect... The subject of evolution Ray Comfort seems point. to That's disappear. The way he talks. You know, anybody that says that the atheists don't have awe and wonder, they've never seen an episode of Cosmos. They've never had a damn mm-hmm. telescope. They've never been at a star watching party. We have wonder on the questions that have not been answered that we might be able to find the answer for. That's a, that, that's what makes things interesting. I, I mean, I was about to interrupt you and get pissed off that you're, I, it sounded like you were about to say we don't have wonder and I was going to... Oh no, that was the worst thing. <laughs> that was the worst thing Oprah yeah. ever said. I did, just, <laughs> it is really science and up. math that's going to get us there. It doesn't make a sunset less beautiful that I know what's going on. Seeing humanity get ever closer to the stars, it makes me want to cry. I, I, I'm just, I'm excited that I get to be a part of it. And that's an emotional argument. It is. That's an emotional argument. You know what? There are good arguments to be had logically, but to say that it isn't fucking amazing that we should be going out and, and, and reaching out and telling people, hey, you know what? We need to put in the hard work because what's on the other side is beautiful. We can actually go, hey, you know what? There are tangible results on the other side of this. All you have to do is show your children that they should. And yet... No, aren't no shame on you. Don't say you're no, no, they get the emotional argument. We get both. We get both. <laughs> this spring, I'm going to be going to a paleontological expedition in South Africa, mm-hmm. and I will be spending two weeks in the wilderness living in a pup tent surrounded by hyenas. <laughs> is the image that I've got, but I'm, I'm going to be going with a university expedition, and we are hunting for Permian therapsids. Now, the reality is that because we know how science works, we are very likely to discover Permian therapsids, exactly as we said. But there's the possibility for surprises because we can't just dismiss whatever the record of the rocks says because our man-made mythology said something different. We can't ignore that. Science doesn't work the way that religion keeps insisting that it does. Sorry, uh, Paul, I, I, I don't know about you, but I've got nothing to add. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I, I just imagine Aaron traipsing through the jungle, scaring the wildlife. <laughs> Speaking of scaring the wildlife, any final thoughts on the Ark protest? Well, I think it's important to change minds, you know, when, when they're wrong and you can prove that they're wrong, when it's not just a matter of opinion like they paint it out to be. We're talking about fact versus fiction, literally. I, I got to say that this is one of those times when steel manning an argument is exactly the right thing to do because they are so clear and forward about exactly what they believe that countering it and being loud and showing the facts, right? The best way to argue it is through education. Arn, you're amazing at that. And Paul, you are too. Let's see. There was a little drone following us as we walked up. They were operating this little video drone to just watch us and keep an eye on us and make sure we weren't like stepping on the grass and crap. Wow. Uh, Yeah. And so we're just looking up at the drone. And then there was a second drone. Apparently, somebody who came to the protest set one up. And so there were just competing drones flying over us. That was interesting. It's not competing drones until one lasers the other. I I, I was hoping. I was hoping. (laughs) Maybe next year we can have drone wars. That would be awesome. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Could you imagine? (laughs) See, there we go. There we go. That's STEM. That's that's a love of STEM right there. What else? There was some trickery going on in the background. And after the speeches, they got the entire crowd to sing happy birthday because Kelly, Helton, and I both have birthdays on July 9th. And so they got the whole crowd to sing happy birthday, which was embarrassing and fun and nice. Well, in honor of your birthday, since you enjoy things that are embarrassing, fun, and nice, how about we see what Ken Ham and company have to say about the news? All right. I can do that. Yay. This strange plant has flowers with petals shaped like hummingbirds. And surprise, surprise, this comes from Australia, which reading this article, I find out there's no hummingbirds in Australia. No, somehow they're saying by chance, random process, just because of that plant, it just happened to look like a hummingbird because they don't believe there could ever be a creator. So, okay, so you have a leaf that looks like a hummingbird. So what? 
And it's it's only superficial. It looks like an origami. You can see on the plant behind it, like you have to pick this thing and put it in your hand before it starts to look like a bird. Yeah, it only looks like a bird in that one position. Humans are pattern seekers, and this is like the perfect example of we just see patterns where none exists. It's like when you see faces in the in the clouds or in the rocks. I mean, how often have you seen something in the clouds? Does that mean God made it that way? Oh my gosh, this is only making its way around creationist sites. Yeah, because if you wanted to argue that seeing a rock formation, you know, that vaguely looks like a face or a toast that looked like Jesus or the cloud that looked like an angel and how those got on all the greeting cards. But somehow when you get a cloud that looks exactly like Godzilla, nobody cares. Well, it depends on which Godzilla. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Legumes. I just did a cursory Google search and they come up in, in these big bushels and look nothing like hummingbirds. I'm calling shenanigans. But the yeah. real question mm-hmm. is, are those birds marsupials? <laughs> That's the question about that. Oh my. Is it the real question why God decided to stop, I don't know, not giving babies cancer to go and fucking, I'm going to do little origami flowers. I'm just going to stick them out there. Yeah, no, I'm not going to have to worry about rape and abuse and violence and kidnapping and disease and starvation and degenerative illness. No, I'm going to put little little hummingbird flowers if you look at it and squint just the right way. That's that's a good use well, of my time. Well, what I really like about this is that Ken Ham actually has a legitimate science degree. It's a low level one. So when this guy said, "Are these flowers, which were represented to be birds, are these birds marsupials?" Ken knows that marsupials is only only meaningful as a subdivision of mammals. So, so to say that birds are marsupials is idiocy. And you can see how he's dumbfounded, correcting one of his own people. But they're birds. <laughs> of course, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> possibly be a marsupial bird (laughs) of course not all marsupials in australia but a lot of the mammals in australia are marsupials uh, which just highlights the one thing that made me decide that young earth creationism was crap was their explanation that you know kangaroos and other marsupials just floated over there all of them floated over to australia on lots yeah and the only marsupial that is found anywhere else is the least derived or most basal form I mean, you could look at a shrew, and that's the basis of all eutherian mammals. But the, similar to that is the possum. So they, at the point where marsupials and eutherian mammals split, they looked almost identical to each other. And it was only that most primitive one that we get. All the all the more derived ones were trapped on Australia. I, I'm sorry. I, I could just imagine them staring at Arn. Like, that was way higher level than I think these people are capable of, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> But they said in here that it's um, a member of the legume family, so chickpeas, alfalfa, that kind of thing. Right, if you're, you mean legume. Cool. Legume. Legume. What did I say? How did you say it, Harris? Same way. Legume. <laughs> I said legume. Okay. You want to fight about it? <laughs> I now identify with her. <laughs> well, I'm Canadian, so I always have to. Or, how do you say it? It was the first time that, I, that I'd ever seen the word, too. I mean, I've heard the, bit, the weird, weird thing is I have heard the word legume. I've never seen it written. Did you just hybridize a little bit between us? How do you say it? I'd heard the word the way it's correctly pronounced, but I'd never seen it. And mm. seeing it, my first pronunciation was the one you did. Legume. Yeah. You're not saying legume. No, I'm not. <laughs> legume. Legume. <laughs> he said, he said legume. This is compelling TV. <laughs> I think of octopus and a lot of things, you know, they'll do uh, different mimicry, right. you know, to try to look mm-hmm. like something else. He says that flowers are trying to look like hummingbirds and octopuses. Well, I've never seen a flower that looked like an octopus. Maybe that's because they don't try very well. Ooh, I have. You've tried to uh, look like an octopus? No, no. I've, I've seen little octopus looking flowers. Well, I'm sure that's uh, very valuable. It's, it's a it's a carnivorous one. Yeah, I'm sure it's very valuable to ward away hummingbirds that, that might otherwise, you know, be terrified of octopus. <laughs> you know what? You don't know. You don't know that, Arn. Okay. You, you might discover this on your, you know, your trip. <laughs> swarm of mayflies invades Ohio. Insects detected on local weather radars. But, you know, people oftentimes think when they see these swarms of things, they think of the plagues. Wait, hold on. Are they saying this is a biblical plague of mayflies? Are you saying Ohio is being judged? <laughs> In Ohio. In, this is in Ohio. Yeah, maybe. because because there aren't very many Christians up in Ohio, right? That's right. It's so secular. Yeah, w- that that's why the plague isn't happening to New York or Miami yeah. or Los Angeles. No, it's the secular bastion of Ohio. <laughs> uh, no, 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 South Ohio 
connecting with Kentucky. So where we just were a couple oh. of days ago. I mean, really, honestly, if I had deistic powers, I would send a plague to where we just were. That was fucking horrible. <laughs> but I, I, I mean, really, how scary is it that these people live in a world where they think that plagues will be sent to them because of their actions by some wrathful deity? What, what are they? Do they think God missed? Like he meant to send it to New York and it just got, you know, rerouted to Ohio. Something I saw in the news many years ago, where as a tornado attacked some little Iowa town, right? And it skipped over house number one, tore up some field, skipped over house number two, tore up the field next to that. And the only building that was actually destroyed in the entire town was the church, because that's where the town fled to for safety. So the building collapsed under the tornado and most of the town was killed. And of the half a dozen people who survived, they came out thanking God for saving them. I had to respond that, you know, it didn't look like God was saving anybody. It looked to me like he went bowling for Christians and got nearly all of them. <laughs> He's got a 7 10 <laughs> split on the second side. <laughs> when Notre Dame, you know, a couple of the crosses survived, that was considered miraculous. But of course, they were made of a certain metal where the melting point was far above what the fire got to. So it's not it, like can, it can be that. It could be, look, this Bible survived. It lodged itself in Johnny's head. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that miraculous? Yeah, that was such a miracle from God that he didn't save all those people who died and instead left this stupid icon. Well, that and, you know, flowers that look like birds. <laughs> yes. Come on. Yes. Is flowers it just that look like birds. Hmm? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, just coincidence? Being able to confidently share the truth. Nope, you don't have the truth. You have empty assertions of impossible nonsense that you believe for no good reason. The truth, by definition, is what we can show to be true. The truth is what the facts are, and you don't have facts. You have empty bullshit. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> don't be sorry. We love that stuff. Yeah, Aaron's great at parties, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, how was the party? How was the party at the... Uh... Oh, we can't talk about that. <laughs> oh, okay. That's great. You, you, know, you know how stiff and dry those intellectual soirees are. Mm. You know, everybody just discussing philosophy over their brandy. Well, that was the same kind of party that all atheists have and had that night, too. No, really, honestly, we're seeing how many times we could set Aaron off. It was great. He's got some good stories. <laughs> Thank oh, cool. you all. Yo, I thought the plural of you all was yo yo. Oh, oh yo. Yeah. Y'all is singular. All y'all is I don't know. Right. Right. Wait, he just said y'all is singular? He said y'all is singular and all y'all is plural. Kit, are they, yeah, a are contraction they incorrect of about you, everything? A contraction of you all obviously is not singular. You know, of all of the things that we've talked about so far, this is the one that made my eye twitch. <laughs> They can't even speak hillbilly right. No, 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 no. All the other crap I was prepared for. I wasn't ready for this. Punished by Washington State for refusing gay couple Flores named Best for 2019 by local community. She was sued for um, not creating a uh, bouquet for a gay wedding. Specifically for that. Um, specifically for that. She would sell them uh, flowers. They sell them to anybody. But when they wanted them to bake a cake and specifically, uh, mm -hmm. you know, rejoice. Use their creative at, abilities. At, at, use their yep. creative abilities to, to condone to gay marriage. Or, yep. you know, the same for a floral arrangement specifically mm -hmm. to promote, you know, a, a gay marriage. And they said, we can't do that. Can't use our creative ability that we'll sell you flowers. Right. In a way, Ken Ham is finally shifting slightly over to where I can agree that no one should be allowed to not sell what you've already made. As someone who has made a living as an artist at various times in my life, compelling art is a gray area. Do you guys not agree? Like, it's no, I, 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 Believe it or not, this is something that I agree with the Christians about because, I mean, I like to do as a hobby, I like to do paleo art on occasion. I've made a couple of renderings like prehistoric animals as if they were taxing, mm -hmm. you know, someone like I had mounted on my wall for several years. I had a prehistoric fish that I made myself yeah, it, as a fishing trophy. Didn't sing. But. Yeah. So if, imagine that this is my profession now that I make paleo art, except that they want to commission me to make paleo creatures kind of wrong. And they want to make it for the Ark Encounter so that they can use that to mislead and deceive children. Right. Yeah. I, I'm definitely going to hold to my right to refuse to participate in that. Likewise, if I were a cake decorator and somebody came in and wanted me to do a swastika and an anti-Semitic statement, no, I'm not doing that either. No, but I'm not going to violate my ethics that I actually do have, especially as a secular person. I, yeah. Now, now, if you're running a restaurant, you can't turn people away because somebody came into your restaurant to eat. There's nothing about that that causes you to endorse 
a position you don't hold. Yeah, if I'm going to make French fries, I can't discriminate who the French fry ends up with. Because they want to force their LGBT worldview on the culture, mm -hmm. and they want to hurt Christians. Right. They want to make Christians be involved in their pagan ritual. This is where we get the persecution. You know, He wants to pretend that they're targeting Christians for their bigotry just because the vast majority of bigots in this country happen to be Christian. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.22 says, abstain from every form of evil. So he's just said that homosexuality is evil. What is evil? If I have to use the word evil at all, I'm going to have to interpret evil as cruelty or selfishness at the expense of others, which historically actually does apply to Christianity, like the entirety of Christian history, but obviously not to homosexuality. How is homosexuality evil? I love this person. That makes me evil. Excuse me? How? Free exercise would be allowing that person, I'm a Christian, I can't condone uh, gay marriage, but mm -hmm. you know, you want to buy flowers from my flower shop, I'll do that for you. Or well, the mm -hmm. same for a bakery, you want to buy cakes, it's fine, I'll sell them to you, but you want me to go against my right. Christianity well, and, and say happy gay marriage, you know, yeah. bless you or whatever. No, I can't do that. And I agree with him on this point, and that the Constitution is like this. I mean, the Founding Fathers wrote into this that they shouldn't be forced to endorse a religion that they don't agree with or abide. I hate being in a position where I agree with Ken Ham, but I have to be fair. I agree in the way that you're saying it. Just practically, there needs to be a line. And unless we're very clear with that line, it can be very weirdly overstepped. Example, if you make cars, as people buy them, you put in different upgrades to the cars, right? You, you put in a moonroof or you put in a stereo or whatever, and you find out that one of those people is gay. And so you don't want to put the upgrades in their car because they want to buy that. Can you say, I don't want to do that for you. That's against my religious. I have items for sale. They go to sell to everybody. It doesn't matter who buys them. The issue becomes, as Paul was saying here, when you have to use your craft in an implicit endorsement of a position you don't hold. So I shouldn't be forced as a paleo artist to depict wrong evolution for the Ark Encounter and so forth right. like that. But if your craft is, in this example, putting butt warmers in seats and stereos in the consoles and a moonroof in the roof. Then there's nothing about that vehicle going to a gay person or going to a Nazi or going to whoever else. You know, whatever, whatever demographic you want to choose that you may object to, you're not endorsing their position in any sense by selling them a car. Okay, but you're endorsing their position by selling them flowers. She, she was an arrangement, a floral arrangement with ribbons and banners and everything to celebrate this thing, and she wasn't going to take part of that. Okay, ribbons and banners I get. That wasn't really added in here in the story, and so that really doesn't Understood. come across. They're notorious for leaving information out. That's, okay. not a, that's not new. I think you're right. I think there will come down to some legal test similar to the lemon test, although the lemon test is in trouble, as I understand it, for what is endorsement and what is yeah, not. Yeah, the, you're the lemon right. test that's is in get trouble because in. people didn't vote when they should have because it didn't matter, apparently, who puts in Supreme Court nominees. You know, it doesn't matter who chooses those. But, okay, <laughs> uh, I, I, I think we're leaving that we're all in agreement, actually. I'm totally in agreement with y'all if we are. We're good with that. And, and, and unfortunately with Ken a little bit, but <laughs> stranger things. Imagine if somebody went up and said, hey, uh, to a homosexual baker or a homosexual florist and said, hey, we want you to use your creative abilities over here for the straight parade. Right. They might say, no, I don't agree with that. You know, would they undergo all the so sort of battles if, and everything? If, then? if, yeah. right, if yeah. there were some gay people that owned a bakery and you went mm -hmm. in there and said, I want you to make a cake for me that says marriage is only one man and one woman. What would they do? Uh, Ken would they do? refuses to let his employees make a good point without him <laughs> reiterating the same point. No, it, yeah, <laughs> another important thing here is that his uh, his co-host, balding man over here, uh, whoever that guy is. That's his son-in-law, actually. Oh, okay. Well, he's capable of thinking hypothetically. It's an ability a lot of creationists don't have. I think we need to coin the term Ken Splaining. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would use that a lot. Somebody said here, brave woman, Lord bless that woman. Blessing. What is a blessing? A blessing is a positive version of what we'd otherwise address as a curse, right? So it's a magical enchantment. It can either go bad and be a curse, or it can be good and be a blessing. It's like a plus five on your rolling dice versus a minus five on your rolling dice. That's the way that that works. Either way, it's fucking magic. Blessings and curses are magic. So when you tell me to have a blessed day, you're telling me to have a magically enchanted day. And if you don't think that sounds silly to you, imagine how silly it sounds to me. I don't know. It sounds silly to me for totally different reasons. Plus five <laughs> on a roll is like a fucking miracle, dude. Give it like a plus two, maybe. <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> well, yeah, I realize SOP, that most man. of God's blessings are like plus one or plus two. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> absolutely. You're upping God your is kind of half-assed that way. Yeah. <laughs> Newly consecrated gay bishop declares God is a woman. Well, he got to one of the lines in the Nicene Creed, oh, which I is... No, Nicene, Nicene, Nicene. 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 You millennials are weird. <laughs> from Nicene. Hey, the or problem the is. <laughs> see, the problem is, I was homeschooled, and so I've read a lot of things, but not necessarily heard them pronounced all the time. We could just stop this with the problem is that you were homeschooled. <laughs> That's be, uh, no, oh, oh no, 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 no. Please, please, please continue. Um, what is there to say? I'm sorry, I was homeschooled. I don't understand words. I'm going to continue to use them. <laughs> that's, that's why I'm on a show with Answers in Genesis. It's great. It's great. Because I don't know things. Great. Yeah, no, put me in front of children. This is a great idea. Nice. Who pronounced okay. it nice increase? <laughs> There we go. Well, like not eight people raise okay. their hands. Who doesn't okay. even know what we're talking about? <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. oh, 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 wait, wait. Hold on a second. The Council of Nicaea, the, the very council that decided what books go into the Bible, everyone's laughing because they have no fucking idea what that is. We have an audience who came to the Creation Museum to watch no, this. Like, yeah, does oh, not oh, know man, it's so funny. Is. I can't pronounce the thing that literally determined what books are in the fucking Bible I'm using to beat other people with. They have no idea. Oh, I get, I get uh, challenged on this all the time, that it wasn't really the Nicene Convention, that it was a host of other events. But collectively, historically, it is referred to as the Nicene Convention, where they decided what books were going to be canon and what books were going to be rejected. And it really did come down to a collection of human decisions. Now, some of that did happen over a period of years of different meetings, some of which in other places. And some of that was directed after the fact by what the churches were already teaching and what was already popular in the area, so they can no longer reject this because too many people are being taught that. That's really the way that it came down. Again, this is another one of those flying right over their heads, giving them way more credit than they deserve. Because if you were to ask them about the Council of Trent, and they went, oh, no, I didn't understand Nicaea, but Trent, oh, <laughs> oh, you meant the Council of Trent. Oh, no, we're totally good. No, dude. Yeah. No, it's okay. She was homeschooled. She doesn't understand. There's really one religion out there that has a supreme deity that is a female. That is witchcraft. Mm. Think about this for a moment. No, don't, don't, no. They'll run, they'll run, screw me from the room. Don't think about it. Don't think about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Don't think about like the, uh, the the third largest religion in the world, which is Hinduism, which has Shiva that possesses both sexes. Don't think about that. Let's just still show how we don't know what the hell pagan means, and we'll just decide that. This is the only religion that, that has a, dom well, I guess dominant, there's the one dominant. It would be uh, Wicca or one of the neo-pagans. So he's got a point as far as having a dominant goddess. Well, no, even then it doesn't work because that is the god and the goddess, even according to Wiccan ceremonies. So, no, he's still wrong. Why are you so, uh, Arn, you are so charitable. I'm just sitting here and watching the dude who's saying, oh, no, whoever says goddess is a witch. Yeah, yeah. Oh, staring at the homeschool girl. About to make the case for God's penis. A lot of people may not recognize that when they see somebody doing that sort of thing, but... You know why? You know why they don't recognize that? Because that's not what it is! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, I got it. So let's continue learning about God's magic wand. In the Bible, God is represented in the masculine. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus became a man, mm -hmm. the masculine. The now, God. God is God is spirit, and mm -hmm. God is not a physical right. being like us. Right, yes. Right? Wait, wait, if, but he's, yeah, he's a spirit. He's not a physical being like us, unless you read the freaking Bible where you know, God walks, talks, eats, sits, turns his head, waves his hand, shows his backside, and cheats at wrestling. Yeah, let's look at the, when God showed up to Abraham's door, right? I mean, so Abraham opens the door. There's three guys there. According to the Bible, Abraham opens the door. There's three guys there. He recognizes one of them and says, oh, hi, God. Is that a spirit or is that a guy standing at the door? There are three guys standing at the door, so the Bible says. Two of them are sent away, and they go down to Sodom, and they become the angels that Lot decided to protect them from being anally raped, so he offers his own daughters to a rape mob, right? So those those angels, those two have left. Now, when you have three, three men show up at the door, and two leave, basic math, how many people are still standing there, right? So we have God, and God, according to the story, then goes and sits by the tree and eats, and it's the same guy who wrestled with Jacob. And it's the same guy who let like 72 people look upon him all at the same time. It's the same guy who says, who both told Moses that no man can look upon me and live and also spoke with him face to face as a friend speaks to his friend. The Bible's just full of contradictions. And so this is just one more of them. On the whole, God is only a spirit thing. But Ken is quite sure what the genital situation was of that character. <laughs> Evidently, yes. pretty... Going back to uh, Proverbs 8 and 9, actually, I think that's actually in the next article, if I remember right. Uh, or am I jumping here myself? 
or am I grabbing the wrong one? So yeah, sorry, I'm grabbing the wrong. I'm looking. <laughs> it, I'm like, what's my notes? Well, on that's because this? I think Avery skipped one. <laughs> I did skip over one. That's, okay. that's all right. We'll no, go back. That's fine. Yeah, we'll you, go back you, you see, it's all her fault. <laughs> Everything's my fault. Today. See, that's because you were homeschooled. Homeschool kid. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you guys. Any changes should be done uh, by looking at God's word and making sure mm -hmm. we're not saying something that contradicts yeah. God's word. It's not God's word. It is the word of ignorant, bigoted, primitive, superstitious savages who had no idea what they were talking about. And that's just the, the, the old fables that they were adopted and adapted from. And then we had mere fallible men who compiled these, excluded several that they didn't like, decided that the congregations like these, so we'll call these the word of God. And it was a huge fucking mistake. These are the words of men, mere, fallible, idiot, primitives who have no idea. That's why they're wrong about everything. Why do you think the Bible is absolutely wrong about absolutely everything back to front, historically, scientifically, ethically, morally, everything, it gets wrong. We should deviate from the word of God so that we can allow people to work on weekends without being killed. Come on. You had me all the way up until working on weekends, Arn. Are You are obliged to kill the 7-Eleven person who's working that cash register when you walk in on a Friday night to through Saturday or a Sunday, if you want to include the Christian perversion of that. And yet the Ark Encounter is open on Sundays. Well, why the hell are they not obliged to go kill everybody there? And that's what this uh, gay bishop is doing. Fancy people like that leading the church. Yeah, fancy people do kind of lead the Catholic <laughs> Church. They're all kind of fancy. <laughs> I, I think he means fancy in a slightly different context. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I'd just like to say how proud I am of both of you for not making any bishop jokes. Thank you. It's, it's big of you. In 20 years, their view has completely shifted. And it's not because scripture has changed. Scripture says the same thing now that it said 20 years ago. What's changed is the culture. Another example of that is, you know, the scripture still says what it said before. It still says that the earth is a flat circle standing on columns that are you know, with, covered by a giant crystal dome that is solid and looks like molten glass. And that it has windows in it to let the rain in because of the, the water that is above the firmament. That the sun and the moon are both great lights. They're both the same size as each other. And they're both bigger than all of the stars, all of which are contained inside the firmament. The scripture still says all of that, but now we have this new culture that wants to change what the scripture says so that we can pretend that the earth is a sphere and that the firmament was a giant ice shield that's in orbit and surrounds the entirety of the earth somehow. Yeah, they just want to change what scripture says. We should go back to what the scripture actually says, that the earth is fucking flat. Minneapolis pastor and church expelled over gay marriage. This is another issue of this um, impacting the church. You know, I mean, when it, when it comes to homosexuality and homosexual marriage and that sort of thing, which, you know, they try to make it sound nice by saying gay, which gay means happy, you know, but they, they kind of associated that in our modern culture. Um, you know, this is a form of sexual immorality. Nope. We have a definition for what is uh, immoral. According to Scott Clifton, also known on YouTube as theoretical bullshit, you know, a particular action or choice is moral or right if it somehow promotes happiness, well-being, or health, or if it somehow minimizes unnecessary harm or suffering or both. A particular action or choice is immoral or wrong if it somehow diminishes happiness, well-being, or health, or if it somehow causes unnecessary harm or suffering or both. Now, this Christian bigotry about wanting to fire all the homosexuals and to deny them housing and to deny them jobs and to deny them basic rights and so forth, that would be immoral. But... Being in love with somebody is not inherently immoral. It doesn't fit any of these criteria for immorality. But this guy, again, he's using his own definitions for the same words that we use. He's just using the wrong definitions for them. Jesus Preacher actually Chinese. in Matthew 19 said, haven't you read, he which made the beginning, made them male and female, female mm -hmm. and said, for this cause shall a man yeah. his father, mother, and clearly on his wife, and there'll be one flesh. Well, this is why we shouldn't believe in old fables that have a binary system of thinking. If there was a God, he didn't just create, and I know that there are Christians who believe that God just created two people and they were white, but more inclusive Christians would assume that God did create gay people as well. What color did God make the mermaids? Funny you should ask that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've had that stupid Ariel song in my head for the last couple of days just because of all that ridiculous controversy over the color of the mermaids. My understanding was that in the original story that she was supposed to be green, and the original story was completely changed by Disney so that you know the girl isn't like, you know, her feet aren't bleeding everywhere she goes, and that the guy doesn't marry somebody else, that she doesn't try to kill him, and she doesn't die and become sea foam, right? They changed all that. You know what else they changed? Her hair color. You know, like so many of the fairy tales, the version that we sell, that we sell to children now is very different. Somebody gave me a, an old book of fairy tales that I had to read. Oh, no, that, then that was the Bible. They gave me an old, another old book of fairy tales, and it, it, it was like the original versions of all these stories. And I was a little kid, and I'm reading the original versions of all these stories, where everybody dies. Little Red Riding Hood, the wolf killed the grandmother. 
killed the little girl, and then an axeman walks in, because why, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you just walk into a stranger's house with an axe? So he just walks into the house and then kills the wolf for no damn... How did you even know there was a wolf in here? I look forward to the day when there is literally a fairy tale version of... Like, either they're putting Jesus into comic books with superpowers, or there's a fairy tale version of the Bible stuff where people just accept, oh yeah, this is a myth that we're adapting now, and that adaptation can have songs in okay, it or something. So we'll like have some, some buff stud playing the Avengers version of Jesus one day? Yeah. But see, so often we see people who want to love their sin more than they want to love God. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Now, we don't love sin. If I love sin, and I hate this lie, I mean, I hate all the Christian lies, but this is one of the more pervasive. Nobody is atheist because they love sin. Absolutely nobody. If I loved sin, I would be Christian because as Ken Ham just said, you can confess your sins and be forgiven. There you go. Your magic imaginary friend already knows all the bullshit excuses about why you did the stupid thing you just did. Of course he understands and forgives you because he's literally you. And you're forgiving yourself for the stupid shit that you did so that you don't have to do atonement. That's why you don't have to you, you don't have to go to prison for molesting your sister. You can just say that Jesus has forgiven me. I mean that's what the that's what the Duggar family did, right? That's how that guy got out of going to prison. You just say that Jesus forgives you for whatever the hell you do, and then you don't have to do reparations, because you know nobody wants to do any reparations either, which is another topic. So and you don't have to actually do anything to help people either, because you can literally wish upon a star that they get the help that they need, and now you can pretend that you've helped because that's all that this is about. That's what all the forgiveness is about. If I loved sin, I would be Christian. Because then I could just sin all I want to, and God keeps forgiving me. Because once saved, always saved, doesn't matter. And according to some denominations, it doesn't matter if you're Christian. You still aren't saved because God already knows who he's going to send to hell and who he's not going to so doesn't fucking matter. Sin is completely irrelevant to the question. I am an atheist because I love truth. And I will not accept empty assertions without any justification. If I can't show that it is true, you can't show that it is true, then there is no truth to it. I can't believe you. I literally don't have the ability to believe you. Sorry, I ran. I feel compassion to those caught in the middle. But you know what I noticed? Where was his concern for God and what he said? Oh, I'm so worried about God, the ultimate power in the universe. What, what, what the fuck could any of us peons ever say? Well, oh, he hurt my feelings. I'm going to smite him. The fuck kind of puny ass God do you have? I mean, God apparently follows the, the vampire model. Uh, you have to invite him in. If not, then, then, then you're boned. And he wants you to drink his blood, so it makes sense. Ooh, yeah. That explains the thing with the crosses. Uh, in uh, verse uh, 15, it says basically those who are outside of heaven, outside the gates, uh, outside of the dogs and the sorcerers and the sexually immoral and the murderers and idolaters and everyone who practices falsehood. So you're going to be outside of heaven then, Ken Ham. Those who practice falsehood are outside of heaven. So all you creation scientists got no chance. You're going to hell. First uh, Corinthians talks about, it lists all those different sins, including homosexuality is one of those sins and says, yeah. and such were some of you. Yeah. Okay, okay, no, 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 no. If you want to bring up 1 Corinthians, go to my favorite quote, 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I reasoned as a child. I thought as a child. And when I became a man, I put away childish things. Please at least get something relevant out of that book. This is an interesting article. New NASA, NASA mission. I know, I know you're supposed to summarize That's it, but it. Go for it. I, I decided I want to say something. <laughs> okay. And hashtag Kensplaining. I'm Australian and American. You're Canadian, so... Therefore, I can never... Hashtag Kensplaining. You're also the CEO, so... so. <laughs> I was waiting for you to go say on. that and realize I just have to let it go. I just have to do it. Hashtag Kensplaining. NASA spends millions of dollars looking for life in outer space because they so want to, to believe in evolution. But nobody believes in, and nobody's doing this because they want to believe in evolution. It's not about what you want to believe. Christians, it is all about what you want to believe. Faith is a, is believing what you want to, regardless what the facts are. That is not the case from the scientific perspective. We don't believe what we want to because we want to. I am obliged to change my mind according to the evidence. Even if I don't want to believe it, I still have to accept, hey, this is, this is evidently the case. I now have to change my mind. That's how our psychology differs. He said they're looking for life outside mm-hmm. of the Earth, right, in space, yeah. because they want to believe evolution. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's completely irrelevant. Yes, you're right. It is completely irrelevant. It could have been God's pet project. Don't you think God has an awful lot of pet projects? I mean, I mean, uh, but, but how many planets do we have in the solar system and, and over 50 moons and so forth? And no life on any of them, right? Everything in the cosmos, 11 jillion galaxies created only for people who can live on only 
a tiny percentage of the surface area of this one 8,000 mile wide rock. You just said 11 DJ. And we will be instantly killed anywhere else in the entirety of the universe. But it was created for us. I'm sorry, you lost me at 11 DJ. <laughs> 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 very, very, very precise. It was worse than that. I said Leventy. Leventy. Oh, nice. Leventy Jillian. <laughs> nice. All right. Very, very, very good uh, terminology here. We have tried experiments. We've looked in the rocks. We've done everything we can to try to find out how life laboratory. could have evolved on Earth, and we can't figure it out. Except that we did actually figure that out. Most every step of that. Abiogenesis was originally proposed as a single hypothesis as it has blossomed into, I think, about 14 overlapping hypotheses. Almost all of them can be true at the same time, and most of them have been verified. It's just that there's no point where you have inorganic matter turns into living cells. One step process. That's not the case. There are many different stages, many different unrelated processes in different chemical environments, but we have verified most of them. And that's not evolution, that's abiogenesis. So he's saying life evolved, and he means life originated different series of processes. Yep. So we're going to go to Saturn's moon Can't find it here. Let's go and somewhere. figure it out there instead. <laughs> yeah. That's what they said. No, it's not what they said. You lying piece of shit. Tell me how you really feel, Aaron. It's okay. <laughs> You're safe here. They have this whole paragraph about yeah. how similar Titan is to Earth. They have you know, similar atmospheres. Um, there's rain that makes these rivers that feed these lakes and these seas. And there's sand dunes and there's canyons. And they just go on and on about how similar they are. Okay, that's a really big paragraph. And also, I don't know if I'm going to believe what she says because, you know. Um, uh, you, you're wise not to believe what she says. Well, she was homeschooled, right? Uh, she doesn't do words well. <laughs> and then literally the next paragraph is about how different they are. The water isn't really water and the sand dunes aren't really sand dunes. And it's like. If someone was to say the three of us have, we're similar and that yeah. we all have some sort of facial hair. Therefore, we can have no differences. That would be yeah, a contradiction. Literally, we, also said we all have facial hair, way. but all our facial hair is different. She's reading an article that's similar to that and she can't put that together in her fluffy little mind. Okay. <laughs> no, and, and the liquid, it's liquid oh, methane and ethane. Yeah. I don't think I was swimming in a lake of liquid. Hydro- He's just not giving a fuck that she's talking and just, <laughs> just talking over her the entire time, just hoping that she shuts up. Can we just rewind and watch that cringe just a little bit? Just, just a bit. It's liquid methane and ethane. Yeah. I don't think I would want to be swimming in a lake of liquid hydrocarbons. It's a little colder there. A little colder. There's <laughs> no, no, the other one's jumping in too. Yeah. <laughs> We're kensplaining all over the place here. Holy crap. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We're going to use chemistry experiments of, you know, what Mm -hmm. you find on Titan to try to see how life evolves. Stop. Stop saying that. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Yep. Evolution is not the origin of life. It just doesn't stop. He just he just keeps saying evolution and not abiogen. Can, I mean, can, can he can he further the narrative without saying abiogenesis? Does he have to keep saying evolution? I told you, creationists can't talk about creationism, you know, for ten minutes without lying. And they don't use abiogenesis. They like to say spontaneous generation, which so is absolutely not the same thing as abiogenesis. Of course, but everybody has to, as you said, everybody has to conflate that. It's a necessity. It's one of the foundational falsehoods of religion or, or creationism that they have to have. This conflation. They can't admit the truth about that. Somebody should write a book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or a video series. That would be awesome. Shameless plug for Aaron. If you haven't bought the foundational falsehoods of creationism written by Aaron Ra, you should do that now. Everyone should definitely buy Aaron's book and subscribe to his channel. And speaking of shameless plugs, the last time the three of us were together, it was on Eric's amazing call-in show, Talk Heathen. But on top of that, Eric, I hear you're branching out into all kinds of new exciting things. So you can find me, Eric Murphy, on YouTube. I've just started putting up a couple videos. I'm putting up my speeches and my debates. I'm going to be making original content and posting regularly. And I'm really, really excited about it, man. If you want to see the regular show that we were on, which was awesome. I was so glad that you came out. It's Talk Heathen. Also, The Atheist Podcast is a podcast that I started and then stopped and then restarting. It is awesome. The episode that I do have up has Aaron actually on it. Aaron, you're everywhere, dude. And I want to give a huge thank you to friends of the channel, Psy Strike, Lavender Lady, and Purple Rhymes with Orange, who not only made the trek to protest the Ark Encounter, they also lent me some of the amazing photos and videos you're seeing of the event. Links to everyone's channels in the description. Check them out. Dude, this was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for having me on. Thanks for watching. Later.